This is a remake because in my previous video, I don't think I did it thorough enough. So in this video, I will be proof. I will be introducing outer measures and starting a proof of a theorem. Okay, so we say mu that takes in any subset of a space X outputs either R a real number or infinity is an outer measure if first condition mu of the empty set is zero. Intuition behind this? Well, same for a normal measure. And note that it doesn't take in things from a specific set of subsets. It takes it in from a general subset. Okay, two. If A is a subset of B, mu of A is less than or equal to mu of B. The reason why it's less than or equal to and not less than is because I could take the open set, the closed set on R, and the open set on R, right? Those should have the same measure, but one's a subset of the other, right? The closed and the open. That's how we do it. Ooh. Okay, so third condition for EI, I equals one, two, on and on. This is general, it's not disjoint. Mu of the union of the EIs from I equals one to infinity is less than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of mu of ei. Okay, so this is a weaker condition than a measure. But, as it turns out, is that I can create this into a measure using something called measurable, measurable, measurable subsets. Measurable subsets. Um, we say E is measurable, is mu measurable for a outer measure mu, if for every A, a subset of X, mu of A is equal to mu of A intersect E plus mu of A intersect E complement. Okay, so take for example this be the set E. And for any A I pick, if I look at the subset of A that is inside versus the subset of A that is outside, right? The green area uh, plus the blue area should be equal to the entire area. The uh, entire area. The measure of the green area plus the measure of the blue area has to be equal to the measure of A. Okay? Right there is a. This is the intuition behind it. Okay, so that's what a measurable set is. It's for any A, you can split it up. It split it. It splits it up nicely in respect to the measure. Okay, so theorem. M U equal to the set of all E subset of X such that E is mu measurable. Okay, just as we defined, 
the set of all mu measurable sets is a sigma algebra. Okay, proof. We're going to need to go through the ch checkpoints. First, is x an element of it? x an element and mu. Well, it's pretty obvious because the measure uh, mu of a is equal to, well, because a is a subset of x, that's just a intersect x. Subsets intersect their superset. It's just the entire set plus the measure of the empty set, which is actually just x minus x. And I could just add an intersect a just for fun. That's going to be the empty set. Empty set intersect anything is the empty set. Mu of the empty set is zero. Okay, so that right there is the measure of a plus zero gives us the measure of a. Okay, so number two, is it the case that if e is an element m mu implies that e complement is an element of m mu? And by the way, e complement just means x minus e. Okay, I'm just going to use this notation because it's easier. Okay, so, is that the case? Well, yeah, because if mu of a equals mu of a intersect e plus mu of a intersect e complement, that's just going to be equal to mu of a intersect e complement. Right? Taken from right there. Plus mu of a intersect e complement complement. Why is that? Because E complement complement is E, which is right there. Okay. Number three. Number three is the hard part. Okay. So in order to do this one, I'm going to erase everything we have so far. And write down a couple facts that will be of use. Um... First fact, fact number one, I'll call it fact number A, A, I don't know. So fact number A, A, um, is that A, intersect E union F, you can split this up into A, intersect E, intersect F, union, A, intersect E, E intersect F complement union A intersect E complement intersect F. What's the intuition behind this? Because say this is A, this is E, this is F. Right? So right there, if I do A intersect E union F, A intersect A intersect E union F is that area, that area right there. Okay, but what I could instead do is split that area up into this right here, that right there, and that right there. Okay, split it up into this part, that part, and the other part. Gotta make sure all these markers work after that. Yeah, that's good. And, yep, okay, we're good. So, that's what that fact says, is that if you do the intersection with a union, you can just split it up into a bunch of parts. And those parts will be useful for the following uh, theorem. I don't know why I decided to use different colored markers now. Um, okay. So, 
Now, our next fact, fact BB, is that A intersect E union F complement is going to be A intersect E complement intersect F complement. So what is this saying? A, E, F, A intersect their union complemented, this area right here. That area right there is really just all of this stuff outside of E, so all of this, like if we're dealing with the stuff we care about, all of that stuff outside of E intersect all of that side, all of that stuff outside of F, right? So they intersect in this little area, intersect A, just in case. Okay. So those are what those uh, little facts say in terms of Venn diagrams. And in the next video, we will see how we can use them to prove that this is closed under countable unions. It's, it's crazy. <laughs>